This video series is brought to you by Fleet Pride, the heavy duty parts and service authority. Does everybody know what time it is? Fleet time! That's right, Fleet Pride is proud to present David the Truck Man Sickles! Hello and welcome to Fleet Uptime, another opportunity for us to talk best practices in technology, truck parts, and service to help you maximize equipment uptime and profitability. My name is David from Fleet Equipment and today, yes, I know there's a decent chance it's still snowing in your part of the country, but that doesn't matter because it's never too early to talk about spring maintenance. Spring is just around the corner and winter can take quite the toll on your trucks if you don't look out for them. So in an effort to maximize uptime, I think it's the perfect time to talk with two masters of uptime over at Fleet Pride about their go-to spring maintenance tips. Chris Coleman, Area Manager of Southeast Service at Fleet Pride, and James Winton, Director of Category Management at Fleet Pride. Let's get right to it. Chris, James, thank you both for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and we're talking about maintenance today. Uh, so, Chris, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your background and why we can trust you as a you know, maintenance expert. Hey, Dave, thanks for having us on again. Um, my name's Chris Coleman. I'm the Southeast Area Manager for Fleet Pride. I've been in the transportation business now for about 31 years. I've worked on trucks, trailers, heavy equipment, the whole nine yards. Nice, nice. And James, what about you? Uh, thanks for having me, David. Uh, James Wynn, Director of Category Management here at Fleet Pride. Uh, been in the out and aftermarket parts business for 30 plus years, uh, whether it's light duty all the way up to heavy duty. Uh, been around vehicles my entire life, so uh, uh, got a lot to a lot to share. Very nice, very nice. Well, th I mean that'll come in handy today because um, you know we were talking about uh, just before we started this podcast today how we're seeing fluctuating temperatures all over the country right now. Uh, I think it's 65 degrees here in Akron, Ohio, where I am, and it's the middle of February, so that's extremely uncommon. We have these fluctuating temperatures. What does that mean for truck service? What are some of the standout service needs that you're seeing as we move from winter to spring or as we're having these extreme uh, variations in temperature? Uh, Chris, let's start with you. You know, going from the, the winter weather that we've had when everything's cool and, and all the trucks, are, everything's kind of meshing together, going in over into the spring and summer, you know, the cooling system is probably one of the biggest challenges we see with trucks. You know, it's, it's the time of year now to, to check your belts, hoses, uh, your belt tensioners, make sure your radiators are flushed out. You know, driving through all the salt and the snow of the winter time, it all gets in your radiator, clogs it up, and reduces your cooling capacity. Absolutely. James, do you have anything to add there? I think I think Chris is right on point there. It's you know it's really a little bit of preventive maintenance. You know from from the wear and tear of the winter will go a long way as you as you get into the heat of summer. Absolutely. And uh, Chris, how does this differ as we're talking about heavy duty trucks uh, as opposed to maybe a vocational medium duty truck or you know something light duty? Is is there a difference that we're looking at there? Yeah, it's all the same mechanical parts. I mean, mm -hmm. they all have the the same reactions with with hot and cold uh, and run in the same the same environments james uh what hvac related wear and tear do we need to look out for as we're moving from winter to spring yeah you know yeah hvac really isn't a uh a preventive maintenance type of category but as you think about you know from a either a technician perspective or a driver perspective you know, you want to make sure the condenser, like the radiator, is, is clear of debris. Um, mm -hmm. You want to make sure there's not dust and dirt there. Look for leaks. Obviously, if the AC lines have oil buildup and dirt buildup, that's a sign of a leak. You know, that, should, mm -hmm. that should get fixed right away. Um, and then uh, yeah, I think the cabin air filter is probably one that most people don't even think about. Um, but, you know, vehicles that are in more severe uh, environments tend to get more dust and dirt in the cabin air filter, which restricts airflow, uh, which reduces the efficiency of the AC system. So. Those are the main things that, you know, outside of the, the temperature is not as cold as I'd like it to be. 
And over time that happens and that's a sign of low refrigerant and needs to be addressed. That makes a lot of sense. And when you're talking about that cabin air filter or filters in general, is there a regular interval that you suggest checking on those to ensure that they're working properly? Or is that something more that once you feel it or once you suspect something might be wrong, that's the time to look at it? You know, I would say, and Chris can probably jump on this too, but I would say from a cabin air, air filter perspective, whenever you're changing the air filter, you should absolutely change the cabin air filter. Mm-hmm. More frequently, mm-hmm. if you're in a dusty or dirty environment, or as Chris educated me on last week, if you have pets in your cab and you're getting mm-hmm. pet hair through mm-hmm. the cabin air filter, it's no different than your house filter at home. You know, the more yeah. dirt and debris that's there mm-hmm. is going to, you know, it's going to decrease airflow. Um, and you want to make sure it's clean and clear. Also, you're breathing in those particles too, right? So you want to make sure you get them get them cleaned out. I totally agree with that. Um, and if any of the vocational type trucks, dump trucks, um, heavy haul type trucks, is off road construction type trucks, mm-hmm. you know that you may have to do that um, in between services as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that absolutely makes sense, especially for a lot of those. Uh, vocational applications, uh, you know, where you're driving off road or, you know, in dusty environments, uh, for sure. Uh, Is there anything that drivers can be doing to uh, help the fleet maintain that HVAC system uh, throughout the year? I think it's just awareness when they see an issue, you know, notify somebody right away because that can go downhill pretty fast. You know, as I talked about those leaks, um, you know, blower motor motor rattles, but I think for the most part, it's just, you know, just regular maintenance on the vehicle. You know, obviously vibration is really hard on these systems. So, you know, the vocation will really demand the, the more frequent conversation on how the system is operating. Yeah. Uh, so, Chris, corrosion is obviously a huge truck killer in a lot of parts of the country. Um, especially where there's a lot of uh, salt being laid down on the roads, things like that. What can these fleets be doing to uh, help prevent that damage as they're sending their trucks out? You know, David, just short of moving to, to Phoenix, Arizona, where you don't have to deal with it. There's not a, a lot of a lot of things that are, are proven to take care of the, the corrosion. Uh, ultimately, washing the truck when you go into a, say a snow event and there's salt and, and brine that's been placed down on the road, um, you know, washing that off. I mean, are you going to get all of it off? Probably not, but it's going to help the situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, If your fleet is in that area, um, there are companies out there that do what they call a oiling and they spray a, a, a light film of oil under the truck, on the axles, things of that nature. Obviously, it's clean when they do it. Mm-hmm. And then that oil keeps the salt from intrusion, you know, in little cracks and crevices, but just a constant washing of this, getting the salt off the truck. Or there's moving to Phoenix, Arizona, whichever one works best. <laughs> hey, if that works for you, then that sounds like a great solution. When you say uh, a constant washing, are you saying, you know, if if I send my truck out during the day and there happens to be salt on the road that night, I need to be washing it? Not necessarily that often, but I mean, so, I mean, obviously during a snow event, I mean, it doesn't go on for months on end typically. Mm-hmm. So once that event's gone and the, the salt is, you know, had a chance to wash off the road, you know, then wash your truck. and That way that it's, it's just not stuck up under the truck. So we've heard a lot of reports about fleets uh, maybe deferring their uh, PMs because of, you know, whatever reason it might be. Maybe they are having trouble finding parts or, uh, you know, their financial situation just isn't great at this time. Um, you know, is this is this a good idea um, if, if you don't, for, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like you can either afford that maintenance right now or, I mean, basically what I'm asking is, are they going to end up paying more in the long run for deferring that maintenance or do they really need to be sticking to this schedule? Uh, you know, that is, <laughs> it is something that if you stay on a, a consistent maintenance schedule and you're looking at the truck, you're seeing the problems with the truck. Mm-hmm. If you put, start pushing your maintenance out and you're not looking at the truck regular, mm-hmm. what could be a three, $400 repair? 
could turn into a three, four, five thousand dollar repair. Mm. And you know, and not only that part of it, but you know, it gets to even going through scale houses and DOT inspections. You know, if you had done the a regular PM, you may have caught a, a blown wheel seal or low brakes or an air leak or something of that nature. You so you didn't do the PM, you didn't catch it. Now you're at the scale house going through a uh, inspection and they put you out of service. Now you're having to call a road service to make the same repair you would have made in your shop to start with. Uh, James, how would deferring preventative maintenance uh, possibly affect the HVAC system of a truck? You know, again, I don't know that there is, is necessarily a preventive, preventive maintenance plan for HVAC, mm -hmm. but I think it's more just visual cues, right? If you've got an oil leak, you've got a problem, you know, oil leaks will tend to lead down the road to oil starvation of the compressor, the compressor will fail. You know, then it becomes a very costly replacement because mm. you have to replace all the parts, do all the flushing, getting it ahead of time, getting it ahead of failure, uh, being able to fix those oil leaks uh, will save you a tremendous amount of money, time, mm. downtime, mm. down the road for sure. If, uh, if you wanted to maybe, uh, Chris, defer only until the weather gets a little bit nicer, um, do you think that would be a big deal? Maybe you're only skipping your preventative maintenance cycle during the winter time. I, you know, I don't think that it's a great idea mm -hmm. just for the simple fact of things failing, wheel seals, brake issues. Um, I mean, you could have a U-joint go out. Uh, you know, I, even the, the fact of coolant leaks, oil leaks, things of that nature that, that maybe the driver's not picking up on or uh, mm -hmm. not catching or whatever. And, you know, just it just leads into larger problems going down the road. I'll, I'll add, Dave, I think, you know, depending on what your cycle is, you know, you're getting a trained eye on the truck. They might mm -hmm. find something else that nobody else is even thinking about that, you know, isn't even in the cycle round now, but it can get fixed. Because, I mean, most fleets now, um, you know, I mean, they're 20 to 25,000 miles out on PM services, some even higher. Hmm. So if you push that 25,000 mile service out any further, I mean, you're you're getting up into some big mileage if yeah. somebody is... Uh, not had their eyes on the truck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even with my just a uh, personal consumer vehicle, you know, I'm I'm at least getting my oil changed every 5,000 miles or so. And James, to your point, I'm getting a professional whose eyes are on that vehicle at that time and they can tell me, hey, you've got XYZ also wrong. Maybe I need an alignment or something and they can alert me to that, something that I might not have noticed on my own. So that's a really great point, 25,000 miles. That's a long way to wait. Uh, you know, pushing that out any further uh, could be pretty detrimental for sure. Chris, I wanted to uh, ask you about the international road check. Uh, it happens every year, and every year, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of vehicles are taken off the road because of, you know, uh, maybe it's uh, brakes or tire violations. So, how could this have been prevented uh, through maintenance? You know, by regular scheduled maintenance, you know, getting a professional eye to look at the truck, fixing things before they become a, a huge issue. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, instead of having out of service brakes, you know, go ahead and change the brakes before they hit that mark. And it keeps you from getting shut down and having costly on the road repairs. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be your your major thing that any fleet could do to to uh, avoid getting in trouble during that that uh audit time absolutely yeah that that could go a long way uh for for truck uptime for sure yeah and you know any of the the fleets owner operators they can always go to fleetpride.com backslash deals and see what kind of deals fleet pride has going on hmm. because during that uh the months prior to the uh international road check we will offer a uh inspection at a discounted rate. That's great to know. Thank you. Well, Chris, James, really appreciate your time here today. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I think our audience is going to get a lot out of your uh, tips and your insight for uh, maximizing uptime through maintenance. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Take care, guys. Hey, that's it for our show. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, you know what time it is. Uptime!
This video is brought to you by Fleet Pride, the heavy duty parts and service authority. Contact Fleet Pride at fleetpride.com to learn more.